Uh, uh, yes, sir. So, like regarding the project yes, topics, sir. will we be given the question also for each topic, or do we have to uh, select that on our own? Which question uh, so you are asking? Re related to the project, right? Uh, Is there any project for yellow belt? Are you are you doing any project along with this? Uh, yes, sir, like uh, we were uh, informed about it on the group. Achha, okay, right. So project means uh, right. So you need to take a project, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. So what is a project? What is project? The information and data collected. No, that is not the project. Information and data collected is only part of the project. What is project actually? What is Six Sigma project? So basically an improvement to be done. Yes, an improvement to be done. You're right. Now, what is the difference between project and production? Production is something which is continuous, isn't it? <laughs> continuous. And the project is one time. One time. Now you can have many projects in your organization. It can be a you know, project uh, related to a new uh, factory, building a new factory, or shifting a factory to new location starting a new uh, no, uh, or buying a machine uh, anything can be a project okay now what is six sigma project six sigma project is a problem or an opportunity or an opportunity so a problem or an opportunity assigned to a team for solving solving a problem or finding an opportunity etc understood that is what is six sigma project now to select a project what is the thing that you should have suppose you are uh, working in a team suppose you have five people working in a team then uh, uh, you can brainstorm among you so what is that project you are going to take so you will brainstorm and you have to find out some if five people are there if they give two problems or two opportunity we have 10 opportunities isn't it and out of that we will select one based on what based on what based on what how will you select a project from this list of problems priority how will you prioritize it what is the first criteria for prioritizing a cost and effect yes cost and savings can be a priority isn't it cost saving <coughs> if it is going to save a lot of cost you will give it customer customer related problem also to be customer related problems can also be you know prioritized you can select so either the cost saving or a customer related thing you can select it okay that means ultimately there should be an impact when you do a project we call it as impact when you do a project there should be an impact of that project to the organization understood now where are you looking to select the project you are taking project arbitrary project or you are going to some industry to do that project Sir, we have suggested some topics to all the member groups, all the students. Improvement of acidic acid production, improvement of uh, PET production, hmm. wastewater management type. Okay. So when you say improvement of some production, so you should know what is imp that you are improving. See, what is that you are improving? You are not designing new thing, no? You are not going to design anything new. What you are doing is you are going to improve. Now, if you want to improve, you should know there should be something, some kind of improvement opportunity. Now, think that improvement opportunity, what is that improvement opportunity? When you say improving production, so what is that improvement opportunity that you are going to find? Is it productivity? Is it productivity? Is it yield? Production yield? 
Now, productivity means yield is also part of productivity, but uh, there can be other productivity like labor productivity, machine productivity, etc. So many productivity can be. Here. So you identify what is that you are going to improve. So when you are improving, you have to, you should know what is a gap. Identify the gap. Suppose yield is 98%. <coughs> and you see that uh, you can improve this yield to around 99%. Suppose. It depends what is that. So even 1% improvement is going to save you a lot of money, suppose. Then you can see there is an improvement opportunity, isn't it? Suppose yield is 95%. And again, if you see that there is a gap, you can go up to even 98%, etc. So then there is a gap and you see a gap. Then you will make a problem statement, proper, proper problem statement. So how will you make a problem statement? Suppose it is yield... <coughs> Sorry. Suppose you say yield is around 92 percent and you feel that uh, target and otherwise the targeted yield is 98 percent. Your real target is 98 percent but uh, you are able to achieve only 92 percent. So uh, is there any gap? Is there any gap? Yes. So the gap means there is an improvement opportunity, isn't it? Now, how will you convert this into a problem statement? Our first lecture was about problem statement. How will you convert this into a problem statement? You can just tell arbitrarily, just uh, you can hypothetically tell me. Sir, it must contain data like uh, how to save, how much to save and how to start. A basic general problem statement stating all the profit to the company. Have we gone through that problem statement lecture? Problem statement, three things you should have in three things in that problem statement. And you should not have two things in that problem statement. You should have three things in a problem statement and two things should not be there in the problem statement. What are those? when when the project is yes. happening when, and, and then uh, what, what yes what very good and yes the monetary impact impact, impact impact okay three things very good now what are the two things you should avoid in a problem statement blame, blame and solution blame, blame and solution, and solution. Okay, it should not be there in the problem statement. Now, don't worry about the business case and all. Business case is not, don't worry, you don't write business case now. Business case can be written later also. But the first thing is you have to write a problem statement. You have to define a problem statement. Focus on this. When you write a problem statement and you add some extra to that, it becomes a business case. So first you focus on the problem statement. Okay, now suppose if you want to do a problem statement, you see that 98 is the targeted yield. But we are from the data you saw that only 92% we are able to achieve. Tell me how can we write a problem statement here? Somebody? Yes? Now just hypothetically tell when is it happening? Yes. In the past, the past five months. Ah, tell me. Yes, in the past. In the past. Okay, the, hypothetically, you can in tell me. Five months. Five it months. Was okay, last five. five months. Yeah. Otherwise, we can say based on past, based on past five months data. Yes. Now. We have seen a reduction in the yield of 6%. Very good. We have seen a reduction. Now you can write anything, any way you can write. Now it should be either you write only 92% yield we are achieving uh, from the uh, target of 98%. That can that way also you can write. Otherwise you can say we have reduced uh, uh, the yield from, uh, reduce the yield uh, by 6%. Yes, that is also correct. So two things have there, isn't it? When? And what? Now, tell me what is the impact this impacts? 
Uh, so like this has led to a loss of so and so amount of rupees to the yeah, company. Yeah. So what is that so and so? Uh, so like for five lakh rupees, for example. Okay. Let it be some thirty-five lakhs rupees. Five is very less. Maybe fifty lakhs okay. rupees. You are doing six sigma project. Fifty lakhs rupees. Okay. Right now, now you have found an opportunity. Now we have converted that opportunity into a problem statement. Now this is a starting point. Where do you select a project? Now, so since you have to do a project, you can select any one project. Okay, no need to go for brainstorming and all. Identify and find out, and then make a problem statement. Then your project become. Now you go to what is the defined phase? Now in the defined phase, you are identifying a project. Now, since it is a study project for you, you just identify any one project, but properly make a problem statement so that everyone understand it. And the past, uh, yes. Uh, so Based. this 92, 98, five months, six percent. This all data we will uh, put it ourselves, like imaginary. Uh, wherever you get the data, you get it. Try to get it. Now, why did I ask hypothetically? Because now you are in a class, you don't get time to that. Uh, collect data. So, but wherever you have to collect data, try to collect it. So, but uh, we won't be receiving any problem statement from uh, like practical. Nobody will give you. Problem. Nobody will give you a problem statement. You have to identify the opportunity and problem statement. You have to do that. When you are doing a project, means you are doing a project like that. No, sir, I mean you. like the initial problem which the company was facing. That also we have to make a hypothetical problem and then. Do which, the whole six which, six which, which, which company you are, uh, you know, by, do, do you have access to any company? No, sir. That's what I'm no, telling. Sir, that's the, that's the doubt, sir, we have. Okay. The, in that case, you take an arbitrary, means just an hypothetical statement you can give. Okay. Yes, sir. Cause like so, we have so been only given then, the... Then you do one thing. In that case, do you have any industrial engineering uh, subject in your uh, uh, this one, uh, syllabus? Any industrial engineering kind of syllabus? Okay. Uh, oh. Do you know what is the production process? Any any production process in your chemical engineering? Yes, sir. What are those? H two SO four. So 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 Can acid acid manufacturing. Sir, may I speak? What is that? Sir, like ammonia production. Ammonia, okay. Ammonia production. Urea. Ammonia, urea, okay. Now do, one thing. now do one thing. Now you just go to the internet and just see what is the what are the production related problems for an urea manufacturing organization. Go to a net, find out if uh, if somebody explains you or you already know then it's well and good otherwise production productivity related for problems issues in a urea manufacturing factory in an acid manufacturing factory or an ammonia manufacturing factory okay just find out what are the problems now just find out some five six problems and then you can make a if you identify is it a yield problem yield related problem is it a rework? Most of the time, your chemical engineering is almost all is yield related problem. Improvement is mainly be yield only, isn't it? Am I right or not? Because there is no reworks. It is a continuous production line, isn't it? It's yes, not a batch sir. production. It's yes, going sir. to be a production. So batch production. So only only problem you will have is one batch to another batch. When they are when you are shifting from one batch to another batch. Maybe one uh, one product to another product when you are shifting. So the product, uh, uh, the machine, the setup, they stop it, isn't it? And then they change over time. There is a change over time also. You somebody can take change over related issue. You can say change over from uh, one uh, one product to another product. Change over is taking uh, three days. Okay. So there is an improvement opportunity. You can say this is taking extra than to one uh, one day extra than the standard time. Whatever it may be. So when you are writing a problem statement, some kind of data backup you should have. You know, when when you are it is uh, you know evaluated by your chemical engineering people. So there should be some relation when you read it. So try to do that. Okay, got it? 
Understood? Can you do the like that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So it can be change over. Then uh, OE also a uh, important factor for chemical engineering. OE. What is OE? OE is overall equipment efficiency. So overall equipment efficiency is uh, uh, there are three things in overall equipment efficiency. One is availability of the machines, availability, then uh, uh, performance and quality. Now these three things are multiplied and to get an OE. So I think OE for your organization, chemical factory, maybe somewhere around 60 or, uh, you know, it ranges from uh, 50 to 60 percent something. So there is an improvement opportunity for even I, th I think 60 is also a good percentage. I don't know about chemical engineering process. Uh, I think 60 percent uh, are uh, you can see what is the OE if there any OE related issue. So what are the things? Yield can be one one area you can look. Yield. Okay. Is there any yield related issue? Then you can uh, think about uh, change over time. Change over time as an issue. Then OE can also an uh, issue. So you can uh, decide what is that you need to select out of it. So that's why I said just try to brainstorm or try to uh, find out from the internet what are the uh, you know, uh, basic uh, you know, uh, problems they face in this factory. Inventory can be a problem. Inventory. Understood? Now safety also can be a problem. So how many how many areas you got? Yield, changeover, OE, safety, environment issues can also be a problem. Understood? So you look at those and then try to make a problem statement like this. Are you getting me or not? Yes, sir. Any other question? So then you can make it hypothetically, okay? But it should be related somewhere near to that uh, industry standard, okay? Yes. Yes. What else? Any other question? Any other question? Shall no I proceed question. then? Anyone? Okay. So let's proceed now. So now we are in the analyze phase, isn't it? Now, what are the activities you do in the defined phase? We have explained it, isn't it? We, you find an opportunity and then a, make a problem statement and then you make a project charter, isn't it? Now, what are the things uh, that uh, you write in a project charter? Business case. Problem statement. Problem statement. Goal Vision state. statement. Team members. Then, team members. Team, okay. Scope. Scope. Customer CTQs. CTQ, very good. Timeline. Timeline, yes. yes. Schedule. Then, SIPO can also be part of uh, this project charter, isn't it? So once you complete all these things in a project charter, your defined phase is completed, okay? Once the project charter is approved, your project charter is approved, then uh, you will be, I know you will be going to the measure phase. You will, uh, your defined phase completed and then you will uh, go to the measure phase. Now, what are the things we do in the measure phase? Yes, you study the process in detail um, or not? Process flow, flow, flow. Yes, process. detail process flow. Then? And CTPs and CTQ. Yes, CTPs and CT, CTQ already we have defined. Now we will define it properly in the measure phase, then CTPs. So how many CTPs do you have uh, the, normally we take? 
six to seven CTP, if you have a very good problem, uh, this one, what you say, process knowledge. Now, what is the CTP? These are all reasons. Now, suppose let's take yield is your issue. <coughs> In the defined phase, you have selected yield as a problem. Now, yield is 92 percent only, whereas targeted yield is 98 percent. Now, what could be the reasons for this? What could be the reasons? So it is as good as like uh, selecting a problem and uh, finding out the reason is also very, very important. Now we will see the different reasons. Isn't it man-related reason? You will see man-related reason, the skill of the manpower, shift, etc. Then machine-related the problem, material-related the material-related problems, then method-related the problems, method-related problems, and then mother nature, measurement, etc. Isn't it? Now you find out this related causes. Now this is an effect. You find the related causes and then you will find some six, seven uh, causes. And then you take data collection. Isn't it? And then what will we do? Data collection and we see current state. How will you measure the current state? What are the tools to uh, you know, state about the current uh, level of organization or process? CP? You remember CP? CPK? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Capability. Yes, sir. DPMO? Yes, sir. Defect per million opportunities. Yes. So all these things, where will you use CP and CPK and where will you use DPMO? Through DPMO, we can determine the sigma level of the project. Yes, but where? Which data? Now this is for measurement data, isn't it? Continuous data. Now this is for counts, discrete data. Isn't it? DPMO is capability for the counts. Now this is capability for Continuous data, measurement data, clear? So then our measure phase is complete. Then we go to analyze phase. Now what is the purpose of analyze phase? Let's understand. In the analyze phase, the main objective of analyze phase is to identify the pattern through data analysis. Analyze root causes, validate the root causes, and implement appropriate corrective actions. These are the objective of analyze phase. Okay, now we find out what are the sources of variation, etc. So you need to understand that, like, uh, like let's consider as a, you know, you are you are having some problem, like uh, we are going to a doctor. So suppose uh, you have a stomach ache, and then you had a painkiller and got relief for a while. Then the pain was back again. Now this is happening with every organization. They have a problem. They try to put, without analyzing the problem, they try to firefight it. We call it firefighting or a painkiller. But as soon as the painkiller over, again the pain will be back. So because you have only suppressed the symptoms, you are not uh, suppressed the root cause. So in a Six Sigma, we are finding out the root cause and suppressing it. That's the reason. So the real real analysis uh, lies in identifying the correct root cause okay so let's uh, see this is this measure in the measure phase we have understood that uh, quality of output or a variation is output uh, depends upon the quality of input and quality of process parameter isn't it now then uh, uh, we also understood variation is a uh, uh, you know unavoidable level, even there is no perfect twins, a very manufacturing process has to have variation, maybe in microns, but still we have in my, we still have, we have variation, okay? So uh, there are different sources of variation. We have understood man, machine, material, uh, uh, you know, six M's or five M's, etc. We have understood this, different sources of variation. Now let's understand what is the role of analyze phase. So in the measure phase, you have understood uh, there, uh, you know, you identified around six to seven CTPs, maybe, or maybe more than that. And then, say you put that, 
so these are the uh, CTPs you identified in the measure phase. Now in the analyze phase, you will do uh, the, in the measure phase, we are collecting data only. And this data will be analyzed and then we will validate some two or three root causes. Understood? So then we will take action for this. Suppose yield, in this yield, you have collected the data related to man, material, machine, etc. But in the analyze phase, you understood that it was a machine related problem. Then what you will do? You will focus on this problem and try to solve it. Find out some remedies for this, implementation for this, suggest solutions for this. And then increase our yield. This is how Six Sigma projects is done. Okay. So we have so many analysis tools, cause and effect, uh, Pareto analysis, stratification, etc. These are all simple tools. Okay. Actually, you know, in our uh, in our certification process, we take uh, projects for black belts only. Okay, so that dry black belts, then that should be a black belt level of project. Uh, in your uh, uh, so okay, IS is, is taking different project. That's good. At, at least you can you will have you know you know how to take a project. That's good. No problem. So you have different different tools like this. Now hypothesis testing is also there, but this is a black level black belt level uh, uh, tool. So we'll just uh, cover very simple uh, way what is hypothesis testing, etc. Okay, then uh, let's see. Now let's see a cause and effect diagram. Uh, did I cover this cause and effect diagram? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause and effect diagram is a visual representation of all factors that might cause contribute to the problem. Okay, now what, how it is done, the causes can be brainstormed, prepared by either brainstorming of root causes or by our own way also. Now we can decide the adding your own way. Now let's do one thing. Let's uh, uh, say that your yield problem. Yield, less yield, okay. Now tell me what could be the problem for this yield related problem. Yeah, tell me. Some issue with the machine. Mm, machine, what, what could be the machine related specific problem? Causes? Sir, equipment deficiency. Equipment deficiency, let's say. Equipment deficiency, yes, then? The process parameters. Process the parameter, not. Attentiveness of the process person. parameters. Not followed, okay. Okay, then what else? So, maybe loss of attentiveness of the person who is yes, loss of attentiveness. Process. Yes, loss of attentiveness. Yes, what else? You retain the maybe not your uh, raw materials. The raw material now, what is raw material means? Raw material. So quality, quality of raw, raw material. material quality. You okay. See reactants which we use quality is yes, raw material quality. Okay, then what else? Catalyst efficiency. Catalyst. Okay. What else? Okay, now we'll do one thing. Now, suppose I want to do, uh, suppose, uh, let's say that in this brainstorming, I got around 30, 30 points. Now, what I will do is, I will make a cause and effect diagram so that these causes and effect are graphically represented. So the first thing to draw a cause and effect diagram is draw a big arrow and uh, put your effect here. Now, what is the effect here? Effect. <laughs> uh, what is the effect? Reduction. Yes, lower, less yield, isn't it? So, effect is less 
low yield let's say low yield now this is all we can also call it as y isn't it this is what we are going to improve now this is also the ctq isn't it this is what we are going to improve isn't it yes sir Yes, now sir. we understood that there are five amps for the causes, isn't it? Now let's take these causes one by one. For example, let's say we will draw a line like this, and then we will line, draw a line box here, and we will say man. Then we will do here machine. And then material. Then we'll write man machine material. Then we write here as uh, method. And then mother nature. Mother nature. Environment. Okay, now what could be the man related issue? Somebody said attentiveness. So write that here attentiveness. Now, how do you check it? Like low yield man is related issue. Now, what is the man related one issue is attentiveness. Yes, what could be the other? Absentism. Absentism. Absent, okay. And why absent? Any reason? Health, health issues. Yes. Now, if it is absent reason, then health can be one issue. Okay. Then, uh, can there be skill also? Knowledge also? Skill? So, no yeah. increment in salary. Yeah, that can be also you can say motivation okay now skill what is the reason for skill lack of training yes training now machine related machine servicing okay condition machine Tear and wear. yes unserviceability now what is the reason for an unserviceability Outdated. Servicing lack of maintenance, maintenance or servicing, isn't it? Now, method related, somebody said catalyst. Somebody said quality Office of uh, material, material, quality of material, then process parameters. Understood. Now, what is the benefit of doing this cause and effect diagram? So, we are getting the root cause analysis of every problem. Isn't it? You know, when uh, brainstorming, what you have a lot of problems you have told in brainstorming, but uh, there is no logical arrangement. Now, after doing this, we are sitting, you have five people doing the project. All five people sitting in a uh, room for meeting of the project uh, meeting. And then all of you can discuss on this. Yes, man-related problem. Then suppose you say, okay, training is an issue. You can say, okay, we will let us focus on this training also because skill is one thing. So you get one root cause here itself. Training may be one root cause. Material quality, what is the reason? Is it supplier problem? So supplier may be one reason. So cause and effect means you are arranging the cause and effect in a logical sequence. Otherwise, what will happen? It is just a brainstorming point. Now, this is a graphical tool. Why we are using graphical tool? In graphical tool, because we, we are sitting in a room and everybody can understand this. The graphical graphically we can understand. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Now this is how we do the cause and effect diagram. Now let's understand uh, more about this. Suppose uh, uh, like a low engine power is one cause and we are doing a cause and effect for this. So we'll put low engine power and then we'll put uh, engine related thing 
and then engine related. So this is how it is done. A logical sequence should be there. You know. So this is engine related issue. So low engine power is because of engine and engine is because of fuel starving, temperature rise, etc., bad tuning, etc. And now we will go to the root cause of the temperature is because of less water. And fuel starving is because of less fuel. So you will go, go to the root cause through step. And then we will do with the others. Like see here, you can either do the cause uh, grouping of cores in 5M. That is the very easiest way. Do the grouping in 5M. Otherwise, if you want to give your own heading, you can give it like this is engine, this is not in 5M. So you can do like way, that way also. Okay. So suppose a poor gas mileage. So if you do a cause and effect diagram, it looks like this. So be very careful when you are making cause and effect diagram. This is the main line. I am going to the effect. And then uh, this will be almost 75% uh, uh, like this. And then this line will be parallel. Sub line will be parallel. And again, please try to make parallel lines, not uh, you know zigzag. So if you see, this is the correct way of doing the cause and effect diagram. And then you will see whatever is at the end. Now suppose material related, poor gas mileage. Material related issues are wrong octane gas. Uh, no uh, wrong octane gas is because of don't know recommended octane. And that is because of no owner's manual. So if you see, this is at the end. Now, poor gas mileage is because of, see, after doing the cause and effect diagram, you will see a logical sequence or causal chain. It's not casual. Causal chain. Causal chain means there should be a logical sequence. Either you start from here and end up to here or from here you end to here. The effect. So, suppose... Poor gas mileage is because of material issue. And material issue is because of wrong octane gas. Wrong octane gas is because of we don't know the recommended octane. We don't know the recommended octane because we have, don't have a no user manual. So from one side you go to the end, there should be a logical sequence. From the here if you go to that, then also there should be a logical sequence. No owner's manual is causing don't knowing the recommended octane that is causing wrong octane gas that is causing the material and that is causing the poor mileage so when you do a logical sequence so that you should not put some other reasons other reasons into this okay just a minute let me let me have one one a few messages let me just give very important uh, examination is kind of going on today uh, our black belt program you uh, know working professionals background program so there is an exam so i just wanted to run. Just a minute, excuse me. Okay, understood. So this way you can say no owner's manual may be one reason, <coughs> poor maintenance. Now see this, poor gas managers because of people and people related poor uh, uh, maintenance is one reason. Similarly, uh, people related thing, poor driving habits, then um, uh, no, different uh, reasons like this. So whatever is at the end is going to be your uh, root causes. Understood? So, cause and effect diagram. Now, please understand, cause and effect diagram is not a root cause analysis. Cause and effect diagram is just a graphical representation to arrange cause and effect. Now, the real root cause you have to do always analyze with the help of a data. Now, whenever in a problem solving, you have two ways. Like uh, we say, left and right brain of your... <coughs> <coughs> left and right brain of your uh, left and right of your brain left is logic right is creative so problem solving is also like that first you will have a logical tool where you will has, have a data collection like problem statement you need data you need logic for that after that you make project charter business case etc 
so that's a creative one creative tool then then again in the measure phase you collect data ct ct uh, cpk C, uh, cp then uh, uh, your dpmo etc you collect again data again then you come to a brainstorming and cause and effect diagram etc now here cause and effect diagram is a right brain means it is a creative tool it's not a logical tool only your root cause will be analyzed only with the help of data now what is cause and effect giving is it is giving a probable reasons it gives a probable reasons so that you can analyze it with the help of data okay so without data you should not conclude their root cause understood this is how it is done once a creative tool then a logical tool this is how problem solving is done Sir, uh, can we, sir, can yes. we use fault tree analysis and event tree analysis in this instead of a cause and effect diagram? Fault tree analysis is there in the analysis phase, no doubt. But fault tree analysis, where do you use fault tree analysis? What is the occasion? Sir, we... Uh... Actually, sir, I have studied that we use it after uh, some disaster occurs. Then we uh, lay down the reasons how it happened, and there is a whole uh, chart which is formed. No, it's not for logically. disaster. It is actually for uh, especially breakdowns, breakdown yes, of machine, etc. Okay. Now that yes. is a breakdown of your plant. If your plant stops, or breakdown of machine, etc. There you use the fault tree analysis. There are two logical symbols in fault tree. One is AND symbol and one is OR symbol. AND means suppose you have a uh, um, you know, stoppage, line stoppage. Now line stoppage is because of power failure. Now power failure can happen only when main supplies <coughs> and backup stops. Now, this is a kind of AND gate. So, fault tree analysis is using the electronic symbol, AND gate and OR gate. Now, when you have two things together to happen an event, then that is called AND. Have I covered it in the probability? Now, you don't have that probability much in detail. Yellow belts do not have that probability much in detail. So, when you say AND in any probability, the probability increases or decreases? Increases. What is, you know, what is multiplication rule of probability? Yes, sir. When you multiply two probabilities, will you get sir, uh, will probability increase? Decrease, isn't it? Suppose you are going to marry. Now you want, you are, you have put a condition. Like I want a beautiful girl. And, uh, and she should be working. And she should be a government employee also. Now your probability decreases or increases? Now you don't have any condition. You have, okay, I want a girl to marry. Easily you can get. But when you say, you can say, okay, there's two conditions you can say. I want a girl who is a beautiful girl or she is working or. But when you say, I want a beautiful girl as well as I want a, you know, a you know, girl who is working and she is rich also. So if you put more conditions, so will you will you will your probability decreases or increases? Decreases. It will decrease. Decreases. When you put whenever you put and and means the probabilities are multiplied. When you multiply two probabilities, your probability decreases. Very classical joke. One statistician was traveling in a plane. Now he carried a bomb in the in his suitcase. You know, when he was caught in the you know uh, security, then he asked uh, security people, "Said you are a you know famous statistician, you are a lecturer. Why did you do this?" So he said that I am a statistician. That's why I carried this bomb because the probability of two bombs in the same plane is probability of having a bomb in the plane is very less. But you have two bombs. I also carry a bomb, and say terrorists also carry a bomb. That means two bombs in a airplane, then probability decreases, isn't it? 
So whenever you have condition two things and and condition, then your probability decreases. But whenever you have or condition, your probability increases. So there are two gates in the fault tree analysis, AND gate and OR gate. OR gate means, now suppose the power failure. The power failure can be because of main and backup. Both condition has to be happened, then only the power failure happens. So two things AND, so your probability is less. Suppose a motor failure. Now motor failure is because of capacitor failure or a belt failure. Now here the probability increases, isn't it? The motor can fail if capacitor is failed or the belt is failed. Now the OR comes. So the failure chance is more here. Getting me or not? Yes, sir. So that is fault tree analysis. Fault tree analysis is used in different situation. Cause and effect diagram is different. Fault tree analysis is different. Fault tree analysis, you know what are the reasons of that uh, uh, breakdown. You already know that. But cause and effect diagram, you don't know. You are sitting and brainstorming more and more reasons. Then you are arranging in a cause and effect diagram. Okay? Clear? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Uh, then uh, now we'll do one thing. Let, now let's go to some real uh, uh, case studies and uh, show you how it is done. Uh, Pareto analysis, etc. Now few few things are there. Pareto analysis and all. There's a good uh, you know analysis tool. So I will do. I will show you some black belt level of uh, problem solving. Now, what is Pareto analysis? Pareto analysis is a ranked comparison. Okay. Now, there was a famous study in uh, uh, Italy in uh, 1890. In 1890, uh, there was a, a economist called Wilfred Pareto. So, the theory has been covered in the last lecture. I have covered it. Oh, uh, got uh... Curves or I guess uh -huh. he, he had ah, then, then, then 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 okay okay leave it then you have theory is covered then no problem that let let me not discuss that very good thank you okay now let's open with a mini tab now how to do so you are clear about Pareto analysis isn't it yes okay now let's say say it's a very but uh, let's see about mini uh, see mini tab how to do it in mini tab now suppose say let's take this this one uh, incident category now this is a service level example and the service there are a lot of uh, problems happening like uh, they have a issue a customer uh, raise an issue then is that issue should be uh, solved in four hours now they generate data in a software and if you see how many data is there almost 8000 data is there in this now if you want to analyze it can, you cannot analyze it manually. You only need a software or Excel to analyze it. Pareto analysis, okay? I think around 7,313 data. Now, from this, you want to prioritize. What is Pareto diagram? Pareto analysis. Just tell me two, two things about Pareto analysis. What are the two things that you are going to uh, analyze it? Yes. The number of Defects. What do you call and that? What do you call that? Sir, 80% defects due to 20% causes. Now, is it necessary that 80 plus 20 add to 100? No, sir, not necessary. It means maximum problems occur due to only few problems. Yes, very good. So, it is not that 80 and 20 adds to 100 because two, we are seeing two things. Like what we can say... 80% uh, of the sales come 20% of the customer. Now it can be 75% of the sales comes from 15% of the customer also. Okay. So never think that it adds up to, adds up to uh, 100. Okay. Now, now let's see this. 
incident category, how we'll do in a Pareto analysis. I think that manually doing Pareto analysis and all will be covered, might have been covered. Now let's see that how it is done in a Minitab. So we have Minitab software and then uh, uh, it's like a stat, there is quality tools, then go to Pareto chart. So now uh, there are two ways of doing Pareto. One is you give it in the one column, like we have 7,000 uh, data in this one column incident category. Now, when you are giving this, you should be very careful that there is only few common names. You should not put so many names like services, service management, etc. Standard names of the errors, defects. That is one thing. You put everything in one column. Otherwise, you what you can do is now this is payment failure. This is the problem, real problem with our our own uh, organization because when we are doing the Six Sigma. Uh, black belt certification program for working professionals so we you know uh, uh, when they pay the fee so we have this payment failure problems from our gateway so i just uh, complained this to gateway then gateway people gave me this data see this is the real data now how is it it is in the count like for example cancelled by user 30 so there is a frequency count here so either the data should be in one column or a frequency column should be there, count data. Then only we can do the Pareto analysis. Now, if we want to do, just go to stat, quality tools, Pareto chart. And uh, here we'll put the incident category. That's all. Because there is always, uh, there is around 7,000 data and very clearly defined. There was few categories only. Now, if you put this, you see this. Here, Pareto analysis is done. Now, uh, please, somebody analyze it and tell me what is the output. This is what you need to know. Now, of course, in yellow belt, you don't have to do much uh, data analysis. Uh, that is done by black belts or green belts. But still, tell me what is, what is your analysis here? What are the two vital few? Categories here. So services and server management. Now services and server management are the two vital few categories. Now what will you call about the other categories? One is vital few, then other categories. Or uh, trivial many. Trivial many, yes, we can call trivial many, and there are, we also call useful many, etc. Yes, right. Now, this is uh, if you want to see the vital few. Now, tell me uh, how many percentage is this contributing? Both 87.3%. Yes. 87.3 percent of the service incident reasons are because of services and service management now this is a real case study this is a singapore uh, company's case study now they were focusing they were doing a lot of uh, you know uh, they were trying to improve but uh, they have never focused it on services and service management they were actually focusing on trivial many issues so focusing on trivial many issues will not solve your problem if you want to really solve the problems very easily, fast, then you have to focus on the vital few. Understood? So this is how Pareto analysis is done and Pareto analysis is done and uh, uh, analyzed. Okay? So Pareto analysis is a must tool for your project. When you are doing a level project, Pareto analysis should be there, cause and effect should be there. You can have some histogram, etc. Okay? These are the minimum uh, project tools that you should use in yellow belt okay now let's do one more again uh, another so, uh, yes so i was thinking that uh, the we have solved many problems so you can give one of those solved problems as a problem statement then we can work out the whole six sigma project and attempt it <laughs> so then what is the use of that if i give you a problem statement then what is the use of you doing project so, oh, sir, I guess, uh, like I was telling the problem, not the, the problem statement, like the whole data and stuff, you would be... I have, give, right? I have given you, I have given you the data, uh, uh, I have given you the area what you can look at, yield you can look at, then uh, 
uh, what you say, uh, uh, we you can look at. So five areas I have given you. Right. So uh, actually, doing. from internet, it won't be that much interesting. If we get real time data from industries and all, then that would be better. See the chemical related thing. I don't have much data about that chemical. All the manufacturing related thing only we have. Okay. So that's why I said you can very easily say if you uh, uh, you know find out the reasons. Let's see now that. Uh, let's try to find out a reason. Just a minute. What is that? Ammonia? Uh, so we have PET, styrene uh, production and all. Which one? What is that? PET. PET? PET. -E 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 oh, it's a pet bottle. Okay, pet, yeah. bot pet okay. production. Pet bottle? So we, you will not get, you may not get in one, uh, one uh, uh, go. You have to search it and you have to see it uh, two, three times. What is this? Productivity improvement, pet bottle. Somebody must have done this project. And don't copy the project as it is. Just look at it. You know, look at the problems. What are the problems you have? Now you have this method. You get some ideas, isn't it? Methods. You already know these methods, isn't it? You must have studied it. Now this problem statement is the, uh, not the right problem statement. This is this may be a research kind of problem statement. Okay, uh, and the actual manufacturing at Sanab but AR Pet and uh, Polymer Company consists of the following components. So here also you will get some idea. I know the reasons. Reasons you can uh, fire uh, turn it out as a reasons. So this is one thing. And then uh, okay, one. Uh, so you'll get so many uh, you know uh, things related to that polymer science, manufacturing, material, and processing. So you know better. You you are expert in searching in internet and all. So, but the data is not there. I guess. Even if it's not a chemical project, but if we have a data, then we can do a lot to better progress in six months. So, so <laughs> my data, how will uh, that help to you? So you need to find out, see, uh, when you are doing this, you, you may uh, to put some data. Of course, you can put uh, hypothetical data. Uh, so in Minitab, you can get it some, just a minute. Just a minute, uh, let me just take a call. Just a minute, uh, people are. Uh, Hello, Yogesh. Yes, sir. Just check it. Actually, I'm in the class. Okay, I'll tell you that in just a second. Okay. Yeah. So one way you can do is Minitab. If you have Minitab from Minitab, also you can uh, take some data, rams, random data. Okay. Suppose uh, you have you are taking some data like uh, integer kind of thing. So you give some minimum value, like suppose if you are taking okay error, number of errors, uh, number of errors in a, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, suppose this count data, isn't it? Uh, a number of errors uh, uh, in a machine stoppage, for example, machine stoppage, number of machine stoppage. <clears throat> Let's say that 15 is minimum and uh, 45. So if you give this uh, to ask Minitab to give a data, random data between that values between 15 and 45 and uh, put it in a column like, uh, we'll see in your worksheet. Let me just show you that. Just a minute. Uh, 
go to calc random data now suppose you want to have a normal distribution normal distribution let's take that uh, 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 you want 100 data and let's store it in c1 and you can say that suppose let's take a yield yield is uh, your average is yield is 0.92 that's average isn't it and now you have a standard deviation of around one so if you give this so you get this value okay yield value here so you can just give in a positive value also random data so any kind of distribution you can have here So you see this, so you got an yield, yield result, isn't it? 0 0.991316 is uh, yield only that you can convert that it's 99 point percentage yield. So similarly, you can do it. Okay, so you can, uh, Minitab will give you an, uh, data. That is one way you can do hypothetical data. And then uh, uh, if you want a like number of defects, as I said, now you can take integer. Now you can go some 100 data in c3 column so minimum value suppose you take a minimum 15 and maximum 45 so suppose you take it as a breakdown so this is let's de delete this now this is yield now we can say that this is machine breakdown so data it's better you take from the mini tab or random generator from Excel. That way you do it. Okay, sir. If, if you don't have access, so you have to do like that only. Hmm? Actually, right, sir, I was, right insisting that. Uh, I was insisting because, like, uh, if we have a good project, then we can add it in our resume as well. No, see, that first of all, my project, student projects, all are. Uh, you know uh, confidential thing whatever student uh, gives to us that i cannot share that project okay i even uh, see all this if you see this uh chi square test now this is by one of the doctor did this project this is a real thing so but i have a person confidential report i can use it only in the uh, uh, classes i cannot share this to you any of the project i cannot share you okay but i can use it for your uh, study purpose Okay, so now this kind of uh, value will not help you. You have for you, you have to see you now what is that uh, uh, data. You cannot fit a data, our data for your pr pr um, uh, project. You have to uh, uh, see what is that project, what is that value, and you have to generate uh, related values like that. Okay, yes, so try to do like that. Understood? How your previous people have done? Previous batches? Sir, I don't have any seniors in Six Sigma. They are mostly taken, I guess, biochemical engineering and all in ICH. Mm -hmm. See, project. Uh, Try to do it. Of course, you try to find out data. You can take random data, no problem at all. But when you do yourself, then only it's there is a you know, even if you are doing an hypothetical data, but structure wise, if you do it, then only there is a uh, use. Otherwise, there is no use of project. Only then it becomes just a conformance. Try to do a performance. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So, Pareto is clear to you, all of you? Yes, sir. Now, there is another, some other uh, uh, analysis tools like uh, chi-square, logistic regression, t-test, etc. Uh, you just understand this because this is not covered in det uh, detail for uh, yellow belt. This is black belt tools. So, just understand what is chi-square. Now, suppose uh, you see this data. 
what is this from uh, C1 to C9? From C1 to C9, you can see some data. Now, this is related to a blood contamination. Somebody was having this problem, blood contamination issue, uh, some doctors. So, they uh, have uh, tried to uh, collect data and analyze it. Now, uh, this is the output, result, result of blood contamination test. Now, this is what you call the output dependent variable, isn't it? Why? Understood? Now, what is the type of data, output data? Discrete. Discrete, isn't it? No, actually, it's not discrete. It is categorical attribute. There is no number. But categorical and attribute can be converted into discrete. How? We'll just count it. For example, person related things. See here, person. Person A, four times he failed the test, 14 times test passed. Person B, five times. So where do you get this consolidated data? From this table itself. Okay. Now this is a attribute or discrete kind of thing. Now from here to here, this is, these are the reasons the doctor done during the brainstorming. What are the reasons? The blood contamination, one of the reasons for the blood contamination may be person. Isn't it? Now what is this person comes under which, which source of variation? 5 amps out of 5 amps? Man. 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 What about skill? Man. Okay. Skill also man related, oh, man. isn't it? Now, what about shift? Method. Uh, yes, maybe method or even you can consider it as man related, person related, isn't it? So either it, you put it in method or person, both, it's, there is no issue. What about this antiseptic? Material, material. Material, good. And what is this sterile gloves? Material. So the Material. No, sterile gloves means uh, that person want the gloves or not. Yes or no. So that is method related, isn't it? Method or person related also you can find it. Okay. So it can be when you do a cause and effect diagram. So it, it comes under method or person. What is device? Machine. 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 And prick? Method. That's also, I think, a machine kind of thing. What the? You know? Mm. So now, uh, see this one. So the result, the problem was blood contamination. Now the doctor has brainstormed what could be the possible reasons. Now, this was done in the measure phase and then collected the data, isn't it? Now, in the analyze phase, we need to find out what is that causing this result. Okay? So we have which 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 problem is causing this result? Now, uh, whenever you have a discrete variable as output and a discrete variable as input, we will use a test called chi-square test to find out the reasons or validate it. Now, this is a chi-square test. Chi-square test is done, uh, uh, see this, it, we can do, it is based on this count only. Okay, we will see what is the expected counts, total counts, etc. Then, uh, then we are seeing the variance, etc. to find out the reason. So, otherwise, there is one simple way we can do it. Now, suppose if you are doing a chi-square test, we can see that uh, stat the tables chi square as for association and we can put this now see one by one you need to do like first you will see is there any relation between the result and person so we can go to the stat tables chi square test for association so in the rows we will put the result and in the column we will put the personal let's do it. the column we will put the rows we will put the person in the column we will put the a result. 
Now, what is this? This is y and this is x. Now, we are finding out a relation. Now, funneling. Now, when tool is chi square, we are funneling, the, finding out a relation between this result and person. And then when we'll click, okay, so you get a chi square table in the output. Now, if you see person A, total is 18 out of this, failed was 6.66. Uh, and uh, total failed was 37 and total pass was 63. Out of 100 tests conducted, 63 blood, uh, blood was uh, passed and 63, 37 sample was failed. So you see this, there is a failure of condam blood contamination of 37 percentage, isn't it? That is why they have taken it as a project. They have seen it as an opportunity that there are blood contamination is happening, isn't it? Now this chi-square test will see cross tabulation. What is the expected value like 6.6 is? How do you get this? It is the 18 uh, into 37 divided by 100. You get this. Okay, so, uh, but let us see how it has been evaluated. So, this is evaluated with the help of p-value. p-value means it's a probability value. So, we say that in the analysis, almost all the analysis, we say that if p-value is less than 0 0.05, then only there is a significance. Understood? then only there is a significance, otherwise there is no significance. Now what do you conclude from this? This person is a significant reason for this contamination or not? No. Only when p-value is no. less than 0 0.05, then we can say person is a valid reason. Otherwise, we can say person is not a valid reason for the blood contamination. Understood? Yes. So, now let's see what is that. Uh, this is called uh, hypothesis uh, testing. Okay. So, let's, I'll give you one small example for that. Stratification is covered or not? Yes, sir, it's covered. Now, okay. Now, stratification, let's see this stratification. Now, there was a uh, selection of stratification variables and values in vital. So, suppose a bank collected on errors due to some new account opening. So, there were around 50 data and they were stratis stratified into different types of account like savings, current, etc. And staff who created it. So, suppose uh, account type is saving and 23. Now, which one is having more ever? This is saving, this is credit. Current, current account. Saving and current account. Which one is having more error? Current account. Current account. So there is a difference, isn't it? Now tell me, is this is this different a significant difference? No. Okay. And then uh, let's see the staff one. A yeah, staff A is making 15, 20, and 25. Is there any significance? Which person is making more error? Staff B. B is making more. B is making. So we can say B is making more error. Here we can say current account is having more error, isn't it? But what about this? Significant error. Is so now this is significant okay. different. Is it significantly differing, isn't it? Now we can say that here this out of these three. Which one you will consider as most significant? Is it account type? Is it staff or is it? Shift. Shift. Understood? Shift. Now this is significant. So in the stratification, we are finding out significant, significant the, the difference. Now suppose this is this shift graph looks like this. Now is it significant? Yes, you can sir. say significant, isn't it? A little less. Okay. Yes, sir. Now suppose is it significant now? 
Yes. Only the magnitude changes, but it is still significant. Is it significant? Now, now let me take one more uh, one more graph. Now, is it significant? No. Isn't it? Now, who decides from where this significance starts? So the difference between both, the magnitude difference. A magnitude difference. Now, who will tell? Now, suppose here the magnitude difference is uh, four. Here the magnitude difference is five. Now, here the magnitude difference is how much? Uh, Thirty-four. Isn't it? Now, of course, here you can say, but but what about if it is 32, uh, etc. Suppose suppose this is also around 7. So, how will you say is this significantly different or not? Now, that is where the statistics comes. Significance. Now, that is what we call p-value. So, there is a quantification of the significance. Three type of quantification is there, 95%, uh, 90%, and 99%. But most of the time, we take 95%. 95% means opposite of 90% is 95% is 5% significant level. 5% means 0 0.05. So, whenever p-value is lesser than 0 0.05, we say that there is a significance. Understood? So, normally you will be doing this data analysis with the help of uh, graphs and charts only. But when you become a black belt, so your analysis method will change and uh, you will be finding out the significance based on p value. So, almost later also it may help you in PhD research and all. Whenever we are doing a statistical analysis, we are also always finding out. Uh, trying to find the p value is less than 0 0.05 understood any type of uh, so i think these these kinds of uh, tools uh, might have already been covered uh, by others so i'll not go into detail so that's why i just thought i'll give you the uh, statistical kind of analysis okay now let's see again let us come back to this See, that is why we say that whenever, now p value, p value 0 0.05, less than 0 0.05 is the point where we tell that there is a significance. Now, the person is not a significant problem for this. Now, suppose I think sterile gloves is giving a significance. Let me see. Let's do a chi square with the sterile gloves. Now, person and sterile gloves. Is there any significance? Okay, what is the p value here? Very close to 0 0.05. 0 0.05, isn't it? Now, can we say it is significant? Now, when we see, when we say 0 0.05 significant, so that means. It shows our confidence that we say that we have confidence, more than 95% confidence that person and uh, result is not related. But here also it is almost 95, but we don't have 95% confidence. We have 94.8% confidence, isn't it? What is the opposite of 0 0.052? 94.8, isn't it? Yes. 0.948? Yes, sir. Correct, no? Okay, so that means we can say 94.8 confidence that uh, this is one reason. That means 90% confidence we can say. So we can consider this. Very near to 0 0.05, we can consider this as a, as a valid reason. Understood? So, out of these seven reasons, which one I got? If I do all others, you will not get uh, no relation between others. So, this is what going to happen in your real projects. In your real projects, what will happen? You will take data, a lot of data collection will be done. But after the data collection also, you will find that 
uh, there is no relation then you may have to take some other data collected so and so that is why the defined phase and measure phase plays a major role if you are not properly co collecting data your process knowledge etc then later stage in analyze phase you may not get any relation then you again you have to go back to measure phase and collect data understood yes so normally it happens like if six, seven or eight reasons you find out, but out of this only one reason is, uh, only one is significant. Understood? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, that is chi-square. Why we have done chi-square? Because y and x is categorical, discrete. Isn't it? Yes. Now suppose y is continuous and x is discrete. So in that case, we are going to use ANOVA. Let me see it is there. Okay. Now this is a chart. Which one to use? Now, suppose uh, output is discrete, attribute or discrete, what are same? Output is attribute, uh, input is attribute, what we use? Chi-square. We have just seen that, now. Chi-square? Yes. Yes, sir. Now, suppose output is variable. Variable means continuous, okay? And input is discrete. We will use ANOVA. Now, suppose uh, output is uh, attribute and input is vari uh, variable, then we will use logistic regression, regression analysis, etc. Now, let's see uh, chi square test. Uh, not chi square, okay. So, understood? So, this is this is there in our study material what I have sent to you. Uh, so, let's see ANOVA. Let us understand what is ANOVA. Now, there is a manufacturing process. Uh, for a nitro booster, something like that. So, there is a uh, error called a leaks, internal leaks. Now, these are the operators who did this. Operator A, operator B, operator C. Now, we have taken, see, whenever you are collecting data, please ensure how you are collecting. You should be very clear about data. So, what is this leak? Is it Y or X? Is it Y or X? Is it CTQ or CTP? Leaks. Leak is one of the problem. Now tell me, leak is CTQ or CTP? CTQ, isn't it? CTQ. Now one of the reason for, uh, somebody suspected that one of the reason for this leak is the operator himself. Now, the operator, particular operator who is assembling that is making a, you know, is somebody is creating leak, more leaks. Now, you want to know what is, what is the one way? Now, can you just tell me, uh, can somebody calculate this 805, 820, 715 and 792 and find the mean? Do you have calculator? Very, can you, can you calculate easily? Please calculate yes. and tell me the mean. Seven eighty three. Seven eighty three. Okay. So let's say seven eighty three. What about the other one? Now let's take it as A. Other one? 931.25. Okay. 931. 
789 sir 789 c now what is the mean uh, internal leak uh, b b b b for that uh, hydro booster assembled by operator a it is 783 isn't it the mean leak is 730 it is cubic uh, so the count is cc per minute okay now uh, the mean of this is uh, b is 931 and the mean of c is 789 now tell me which operator is making difference b. b so b is making more isn't it now tell me is this significant yes sir how can you say it's significant on what basis you say it's significant Just yeah. your, your intuition. Is the difference somebody, is more than hundred. Yeah, more than so. But so, is there any is there any guideline that this much difference is significant? No, no. So we we assume it is significant. Okay, maybe significant. Okay, we will see. But statistically, can we say is it significant or not? Now we need to do it statistically. Now what is that we are finding out here? Now this is what is this? Why isn't it? what is y y is a continuous data isn't it and what is x here discrete data or discrete data or attribute discrete. data now y is continuous x is discrete now which tool we will use anova y is continuous variable and x is discrete so we use anova okay now this is an example of anova in the anova we will see is there any difference significant difference between the operator performance if it is not there then we will not suspect operator but is this difference significant then we can say b is making more errors significant errors than others okay now how anova is find out anova is actually finding out the variation within now it will see first the variation within within a within b within c and then it will also see what is the total variation between between a and b and c okay this way it is done now let's see this uh, the stat go to anova the one way anova we'll see response what is the response is output leaks and what is the factor factor is operator now we'll put it and we'll see the result Yes. Tell me, what is the p-value? Less than zero point zero five. Now you tell me whether that difference is significant difference or not. Yes, sir, it's significant. Now we can say that whatever difference we are seeing, that is a significant difference. Now, which operator is differing significantly? B. B. Operator B. Okay. Now let's see see some of the. Uh, Uh, some of the calculations here now this is called anova analysis of variance now what is the sources of variance one is error uh, operator itself the operator means it is called within the variation now if you see this i said that what is the variation within now when you say we find out variation within what is how do you find out the variation it is just variance calculation you know x minus x bar all square in anova it is called sum of squares so sum of square is for operator see this sum of square is 56332 now what is the degree of freedom this is df degree of freedom is nothing but n minus 1 n minus 1 means your uh, uh, n is how many operators are there 3 so 3 minus 1 2 now what is mean square mean square ms mean square is nothing but this divided by this how much is it this 28166 and the error means it is the difference between uh, between the operators now what is the between degree of freedom it is nothing but total minus this so you get 9 and then you get the total uh, sum of square sum of square means uh, x minus x bar all square 
and then this divided by this you get 2474 and when you divide this to 28116 divided by 274 2474 then you will get the f value now f value is one value used in uh, uh, f distribution where f table will go to f table and we will find out whether there is significance or not now in the chi square distribution if you see this chi square distribution there is a chi square value also see chi square value 3.762 now we have evaluated in the based on p value but you can also see based on the chi square value in a table but what is the beauty of p value rather than going for f distribution chi square distribution all the distribution you can evaluate with just one p value so if you see this f value in the table and see that it is in the rejection region same thing will come from the p value so for as a yellow belt you have to understand only one thing p is less than 0 0.05 that means there is a significance so we can say that this operator is a significant reason for the leaks understood yes right okay now let's see what are the other uh, so analysis phase is almost over uh, the same thing is then uh, ANOVA, etc. Then uh, now let's give small idea about the hypothesis testing also. What is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing is done. Uh, let's take this example, sorry, hypothetical uh, case. Like suppose, uh, see. Uh, we have done, uh, uh, suppose we have find out the root cause and then we are suggesting for some improvement. Now, there can be two things. Uh, no, the, in the future, we can say that uh, in the future, you say, suppose, let's say this. So, these are the cases that is going to happen. Uh, in measure phase, you identify CTPs, okay? And in the analyze phase, you have identified the root cause. And then suppose you said that uh, you suggested an improvement. And uh, organization have put a lot of money based on your suggestion. But later, after six months or a one year, uh, we found that there is no improvement. Now, all your money gone waste, isn't it? So it can happen. So whatever you decide now, even though you are done statistically, but when, whatever you decide now, the real result will come only after some time. So whether it was the real root cause or not, we will we'll come to know later. So we want to avoid some risk now itself. So what are the real the two, two reasons that we can say whatever we have find out, those are not the real root cause or those are the real root cause. We don't know it now. We are just assuming. Later only we will come to know that this was true, this was true. Okay. Now here at present, you have to take decision. Either you have to take decide as not the root cause or decide at the cause. Suppose those are not the real root cause. And you have decided to reject it already. Is there any risk? No, no sir. They are not the real root cause and you have decided not to take it as a root cause. So there is no risk, isn't it? Suppose those are the real root causes and uh, your analysis also says that are the real root cause. Is there any risk? No. No, sir. But suppose those are not the real root causes. But uh, you have, uh, you no, know, there was some error in your judgment and uh, you somehow you have decided that as a root cause. Is there any risk? Yes. Yes. Okay, now what are those risks? Suppose let's take the risk involved. Isn't it huge money wasted? Based on your idea, your suggestion, they have your uh, senior people, you have your uh, owners have put a lot of money 
they brought new machines they have made the process change they have tried for new uh, uh, new uh, material etc a lot of new testing happens and production loss etc a lot of things happen isn't it there is a risk similar way those are those are the real root cause but somehow your analysis says that that they are not the real root cause so you have rejected it is there any risk here yes sir what is that risk no an opportunity is lost isn't it an opportunity is lost now tell me which which uh, uh, risk is more significant more severe this one or this one the second one this one you consider this one the ones one? which are not real causes but are decided as the real cause what about this one how, how many says this one so the producer always consider that this risk is severe to him producer the manufacturer this is severe why because everything was running perfectly now you did a wrong analysis some wrong judgment and run some wrong decision and we put lot of money my production loss my didn't get any improvement now the producer the operators or the manufacturer says that i don't want to take that risk let this risk let the loss of financial the opportunity i will uh, i will take that means that is a something in future i don't know whether it we get or not but nobody wants to take risk here now this risk is severe okay now that is why statisticians and six sigma practitioner always says that let us reduce this risk as less than 0. Point, less than 5% what does it mean less than 5% the less than 0.05 that is why we say that less than 0.05 means it is significant that means we can take consider it as there is we have reduced the risk understood yes so this is where that p value concept came now people want to take this risk very less that means you should have more than 95% confidence what is this less than 0.05 less than 0.05 risk means what is your confidence level more than 95%. 95 more than 90 so that it says that only if you are more than 95% confidence then say that is a root cause if you don't have more than 95% confidence of course some cases you can say even more than 90% confidence so suppose if you don't have a confidence of more than 95% do not consider that as a root cause because the producer want to reduce the risk to less than 5% that means okay 5% error can happen we are ready to take a risk of 5% no problem okay that is the concept understood so there is null hypothesis rejection alternate etc now this is what say the producer says that it is preferred this risk to be lesser than 5 and this risk also known as uh, type 1 error decision error because uh, it's a risk and it's a decision error so type 1 error this is type 2 error so it's always preferred that type 1 error is less than 0.5 now this is concept of p value so we say whenever there is a, a p value is less that means there is a significance okay that's right so that's all for the analysis phase so you understood what is analysis phase how to uh, you know take use data and uh, uh, find out the root causes so you can use simple tools like pareto stratification etc you can use you don't have to use much statistical tools uh, okay 
we can do that with the simple rules. Yes, we can stop today. We will then will the next week we will take the control charts. And uh, any doubts so far? Anybody, anything you want to discuss? Yes, any doubt? If you don't have any doubt, we can stop. Otherwise, I'll just show you some uh, a project, study project kind of thing I'll show you so that you understand this. Just a minute. Now, as I said on first day that this was one project uh, reducing the reworks in an hydro booster. So in the defined phase, they have seen, they have looked at the various area like high customer complaints, long production cycle, low productivity, operating cost, etc. They have looked at into it and then they have selected one problem. There were so many 25, more than 25 problems they brainstormed. Out of this, they have selected four problems and then three and then one. And then uh, uh, they have selected rework as a problem. And then the rework, they have made a problem statement. See the problem statement. Average 9% hydro boosters rework rejected at the final inspection state. And uh, within the last production year, see when has this problem occurred? What is the problem and what is the impact? All three things are there. And then what is the mission statement from 9 to 1% we have to reduce? Uh, etc. Now, what is Y1, Y2, etc. Internal leaks. This is one one problem. Real time, we have so do did the ana ANOVA, no? From this some this data only. And then uh, there is a SIPOC diagram. Uh, wow, what is the process? What is the input? What is the supplier, etc. Output. And then uh, measure phase. In the measure phase, they have seen this in the CTQ tree. What is CTQ rework? And then internal leak, piston travel, etc. Auto function, these are the uh, different reasons of uh, rework. And then they have done a data collection plan proper, then detailed study of the process. And then uh, the FMEA is also there. And then uh, the, this is the CTPs they have identified in, based on the process knowledge. So CTPs, now each CTPs they have evaluated. Uh, then data collection plan for CTP and CTP use. Then an MSA is done. I have covered the MSA. Uh, then normality test. Now this capability analysis. Capability analysis also I have covered, isn't it? So in this capability analysis, they will see what is a PP. They will see the current level. So understood how a project is done. Uh, one by one uh, in the measure phase. What are the things you have to do in measure phase? What are the things you have to do in um, uh, uh, defined phase? So this is in the measure phase, we find out what is the current capacity of the Y, Y1 and Y2. And then uh, this is again one, uh, one Y. And then the attribute part, they have counted the DPMO level. What is the current DPMO? So then measure phase is over. Then it's very quick result what they can do. And then comes the analyze phase. So in the analyze phase, they have done a cause and effect diagram properly analyze what are the reworks of uh, boosters rework is it related to internal leak less section external leak autopilot and then uh, properly brainstorm the reasons and then further uh, did a since it is a black belt project so they, they have done more tools control impact etc then uh, proper data collection for that then a Pareto analysis in the Pareto analysis we have seen the categories of uh, reworks now 83 problem 83 percent of the problems was because of faulty spring seal twist casing damage etc and then uh, anova was done and in the anova they have found that is no no uh, significant effect 
then again uh, another data collection plan then uh, ctp analysis which ctp is giving more problem so this this is this is one ctp uh, bell crank and bolt is one one ctp that is giving more uh, you know variation so they have studied the variation of inputs then there is no, nothing uh, and again uh, spring compression also so after seeing this uh, variation then they have identified that there are two root causes and then a doe was also done then funneling approach there were more than 30 reasons out of that they have come to three reasons and then uh, regression analysis etc okay we'll do one thing we'll uh, we'll see a scatter diagram also uh, just see scatter diagram in the analysis phase what is scatter diagram scatter diagram is covered or not yeah sir had shown that it's shown now okay regression no, okay sir, we'll, no. we'll have five minutes i'll just very fast i will uh, take that let me see where is that uh, data Do you think that uh, there is a correlation between uh, the temperature rise and uh, sale of ice cream? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Can there be a correlation? Yes. And do you think that you are sitting late night for studies? And do you think that number of hours awake and the number of copy you have consumed. Is there any correlation? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, do you think that uh, number of hours spent for a exam preparation and uh, result number of marks obtained, is there a correlation? Yes, sir. What's the most specific and, uh, correlation? No, do you do you think means I am just assuming? Can you assume a correlation? Yes. Isn't it? Yes, uh, do you think that the height of the student and the marks obtained is there any correlation? No. Can there any correlation? No, sir. Isn't it? No. So we should see that what is that uh, correlated? What is the reason? And uh, suppose advertisement done and the sales, the cost in put in advertisement and uh, sales you get, is there any correlation? Yes, there can sir. be correlation. Yes. Yes, so many of the times in the analyze phase, you come across like you want to find out whether there is a correlation between two two uh, variables. Okay. Now, whenever you do correlation, you can get uh, uh, four kinds of correlation. One is no correlation at all. For example, height and marks. Is there any correlation? There cannot be any correlation. Is it? And then suppose ice cream sales and uh, temperature. Now suppose you get a correlation. Now what kind of correlation it can be? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Negative. Is it negative? If temperature positive. decreases, no. ice cream sale increases? No. Or temperature increases, ice cream sale also increases? What is that? Temperature increases. So when when one variable increases correspondingly other variable also increasing then it is a positive correlation. Okay, when one variable increases and other variable decreases then it is a negative correlation. So this correlation can be graphically seen using a scatter diagram, scatter plot. Now suppose if I do a scatter plot I will take x and y variable. What is i x here? Y here? Temperature and ice cream sale. What is y here? Ice cream scale. Ice cream scale. And the axis. So you should be very clear what is dependent variable and independent variable. 
and then uh, let's say hours awake and number of coffee also so let's do a scatter diagram now this is uh, temperature and ice cream sales so what do you feel is there any strong correlation almost direct correlation yes isn't it there is a strong positive correlation and this also what about this is it strong or weak there is a correlation weak, isn't it positive weak, isn't correlation. It? positive correlation now how will you say similar to question i have asked in stratification now this is okay okay you can see but here your doubt whether it is weak strong or no correlation etc so can you quantify the relation so then comes the correlation coefficient okay now there is a term called correlation coefficient so we can see the correlation coefficient also basic statistics correlation correlation you put the two things and you see that what is the correlation now can you see this now with the correlation you get the scatter plot also and here you got it something called r what is this r what does it mean r okay so now maybe the constant of that uh, relation okay now r is called coefficient of correlation now coefficient of correlation will quantify your correlation uh, between two variables coefficient of correlation r value now r value can take uh, from minus 1 to plus 1 now what does minus 1 implies negative correlation now this is perfect negative correlation perfect negative correlation now what about plus one perfect positive correlation. perfect or positive correlation now what about zero no correlation no correlation now we consider that anything 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8 is a weak correlation anything 0.8 to above is strong correlation understood so now you tell me what is this correlation r is strong correlation r is 0.975 okay so it is strong positive correlation understood strong positive correlation now suppose uh, uh, what is a point nine seven five isn't it so we say that point eight above is a good correlation isn't it what is square of point eight if you square 0.64. Now, what is the square of this 0.975 square? Please, somebody. 0 0.9506. 0 0.95. Okay, let's consider 0 0.9. So, if R is 0 0.0975, then what is this? This is R square, isn't it? Now, R square we write in capital letter. Now, where is this R square used? We will see this. Now, suppose you find you find that you find that there is a positive correlation. Now, can you use this positive correlation to predict an equation? Can you predict it? Like there is a strong positive correlation. By this strong positive correlation, can you make an equation where you can predict that if temperature this much, then ice cream sales will be this much. So you remember, yes, do sir. you know this uh, equation of uh, a line? Y is equal to A plus I BX. Y is equal to A plus BX. Okay. Yes, okay, now this is regression equation. Now regression equation is done only when point uh, if you have a at least strong correlation then only there is use strong correlation means 0.8 so anything r squared 0.64 above 
is a good correlation regression equation okay now let's do that regression so go to stat regression and a regression fit a regression model then we will put the response as uh, ice cream sales and the temperature just not, not stat regression uh, with the blind plot ice cream sales temperature okay now you see you got a uh, scattered plot plus fitted line plot plus correlation everything in this so what is the equation y equal to y is equal to a plus bx what is a here minus 35.02 so now if you want to predict that if this is the temperature today if you are suppose you are running that ice cream uh, the shop then you can say okay this is the temperature that means i am uh, no we can say this much sale is uh, today we can expect this much sale isn't it now what is the p value here zero what does it mean p value significant less than that means not this regression is a significant we can find out this is significant so there is this we can find out uh, from this equation now what is r square here Point nine. now what is this r square this is nothing but square of correlation so we can say if r square is 0.64 above so that regression equation is a significant equation we can use that for prediction understood now this is scatter diagram and regression this is also a tool for analyze phase okay understood yes yes sir right right so we can stop for today now we'll see on next week okay and uh, uh, you can ask me any any the, do one thing next week you come out with some problems let me find out that okay let me uh, guide you please find out some problems and a problem statement and i will guide you what kind of data you have to take etc okay that can be done Yes, sir. That's right. So, find out some problems. We will discuss that next week. Okay. Okay, then. See you next week. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.